Good evening and welcome. Do or die continues. Round two of the playoffs. We are ready. We are, Andy. It is the Hampton Crabbers at Darling Stadium playing host to the Northview Pilots. Hampton, the most storied program in Virginia High School League history. Northview coming off that exciting come from behind win over Nance. Whenever can they spring another what might be considered mild upset? Uh, let's see, Crabbers in the dark and the red there. Pilots in the white and a sneaky onside kick. They're going to try to, uh oh. They tried to steal one, but they kick it to the wrong guy. That's Tyreek Smith. That's not the guy you want to kick it to. He takes off with it. See you later. 11 seconds in, the Crabbers have a touchdown. You can't fool Mike Smith and the Crabbers. The guy's got more wins and state titles than anybody else in state history. And right now, Norview trying to rally behind the arm of quarterback DJ Mack. He's a good one, the junior with a pinpoint pass right there, completing it to Devin Watford. Still nursing that shoulder injury, but making some key receptions for the pilots. And now Mack, a dual threat guy, running the football as he takes the handoff and keeps it himself. Mack this time back to the air to DJ Johnson. Quick little out pattern, gets racked down, but picks up another first down. They're getting closer, and finally Mack will just take it in himself. One yard out, it's a touchdown, and I'll check the extra point, and they don't get it. It's a seven to six game. But a great way for Norby to answer to only be down by a point going to the second quarter. Can the defense corral the running game of Hampton led by Javon Quillen and the running back there, Demetrius Strickland. Now as a play fake, Quillen hitting Traquan Smith as they continue to march down the field. That Hampton offense very efficient in the first half. Here's Quillen, little screen pass to Daz Newsome. We know his name. Familiar name with the end zone. Ton yard <laughs> touchdown catch. 14 to 6 now. Hampton on top. Newsom has a touchdown machine. Remember, he had seven of those in a game this year against Gloucester to pick up player of the week honors. And there's Strickland now healthy. He was really banged up earlier in the year, but you see the option pitch and he cuts it back inside into the red zone now. And when the Crabbers get in the red zone, they smell the end zone. Oh, this is Quillen taking it himself. That's a seven yard gain up the middle. Here's an option pitch this time. Out to Jenkins, gets the tackle on him though. Uh, Tyreek making the stop there at the 10. Hampton though will keep it on the ground with Quillen and Bubba will push it in for the score. Three yard touchdown, Hampton now up by 15 in the third quarter. The Pilots not going away though as Mack throws it to Anton Ashby as they near the 10 yard line down to the five before he is tackled. And that offense for Norview getting some short timely oh. completions, but uh oh, it's a fumble. Who's gonna pick it up? Hot potato, hot potato, who's got it? Ah, uh, the Pilots have it at the end. Well, they were in pretty good position. Didn't look like Mack was ready for the snap. All right, here we go. Fourth quarter, 21-14. Here's Mack dropping back. Fires over the middle. That is caught. Ashby is down to the one. Couldn't quite get it in. Next so, play, we'll get it in. Why not? And it's in. Kevin Marks with the touchdown run. So many options for them, Andy. They've got Wofford. they got Marks. they got Ashby. It's 21-14. Hampton the lead. Very similar to their 2001 playoff game that the Crabbers won by a count of 14-10. to Over the middle it is Ashby again as that offense is clicking for Norview late in the ballgame. Starting to get something going. Can they make it? Oh, no, they can't. It's intercepted. Traquan Brown, 23 yards. Interception, touchdown, the two-point conversion here by Quillen, and he ices it. That was the dagger as Hampton remains undefeated on the year, 12-0, all 12 wins by double figures as they eliminate Norview behind Quillen's 121 yards rushing in a touchdown. Third pick of the postseason for Tyquan Brown while Norview's season comes to a close at 9-3. DJ Mack with 194 yards passing and a touchdown run in defeat. Good game there, though. All right, moving on. 5A North Region, Stonebridge over Broad Run, 35 to 10. Joe Thompson with 150 yards rushing and a touchdown. The Charlotte commit there, while Broad Run was led by Meech Hembree's 89 yards rushing, 21 yards receiving in the loss for the Spartans. All right, moving on. This is a championship game here. Not in the playoffs, championship in Nasman Suffolk Academy against the Atlantic Shores. Nasman in the white and down the sidelines goes Noe Sirianni. VISAA Division III. Somebody's going to win their fourth state title in school history. And it's a halfback pass from Noah Giles, but uh-oh, uh -oh, wrong team, wrong jersey color. The guy's in blue with the pick. Chris Williams with the interception for Wayne Lance's Seahawks trying to beat Lou Johnston's Saints now, but Ryan Chamberlain will put it on the carpet as that pass rush of NSA starting to tee off. Cole Christensen with the hit on that one, and that, those two are going to get to know each other pretty good before this is over. We call that foreshadowing. Meanwhile, the dive up the middle is Keyshawn Moore for 28 yards into the end zone. 8-0 off the two-point conversion. Luke Johnson deciding to go more to more 
since Noah Giles is nursing that hip injury. And this time it's the passing attack of Atlantic Shores. Anthony Fries with the reception from Ryan Chamberlain. And now Chamberlain again dumped by that pass rush. It's Moore and Christensen as they would have hit Chamberlain eight times in the night for loss. Told you they would get familiar with each other. And here's Moore again up the middle. This time he takes off. Good gain there. And it'll be a quick out here right here. As you see, it's Robbie Toe completing it on the reception. Look at Dominique Claxton go. He's not going to be caught. 35 yards for the touchdown. Saints up 16 to nothing as they go for two twice and get it. All right. Trying to answer for Atlantic Shores that they can't. It's tipped. Chamberlain's pass tipped and picked by Giles. And that'll be a double pass. And he toe to Daniel Griffith down the field. And it's caught there for the touchdown by the Saints. Noah Sirianni. Oh, that tricky Lou Johnston. Yeah, he gave it to him. He said he was in. He was close. But I guess they gave it to him. 24 to nothing right here. Atlantic Shore is not done, though. Chamberlain downtown to Jordan Kennedy. 35 yards there on the board. And Kennedy, a lethal playmaker for the Seahawks there. He can get them back in it in a hurry. Intermission at the Virginia Beach Sportsplex. Who's going to win a state title in their oh. final game of the year? And Cole Christensen wants it another Ooh. amazing hit there as he forces the fumble recovered that time by Trent Taylor. Uh, I think Christensen is not going to be on his Christmas list. But here's Sirianni. He's taken off down the sidelines. Big pickup for him, 20 yards on that run. And then up the middle again, it is Keyshawn Moore with a nine-yard touchdown run, dragging defenders into the end zone with them. They want to win a state title for Coach Johnson in his final game of his 41-year 41 41-year coaching career. Saints are rolling, but here comes Jordan Kennedy. Kennedy off the little screen pass, makes a couple of guys miss, down the sidelines, and he's going to score. Kennedy, his second touchdown of the game, 60 yards on that one. A big play weapon. He had 11 touchdowns this year on kicks and punt returns alone. Three of them were actually called back on penalties. Oh, but that's a bad You snap. see a bad snap, and you know, NSA's defense oh. is going to corral Chamberlain in the end zone with the hit. Jack Johnson there, and now you give it to Noah Giles, but uh-oh, the Seahawks trying to rip the ball away, and they will do so successfully. Sam Stainbank picks it up with the recovery. Gets away that time. They may be trying to come back. Chamberlain under pressure, gets away from run rush, steps up. Oh, maybe he shouldn't have stepped up. But it's Daniel Griffith with the drill shot on Chamberlain. Some big time hits from Griffith and Cole Christensen. Christensen going to Army and now Noah Sirianni allowing them to milk some clock here and run the football, which is the staple of this NSA offense. And now to be Noah Giles with his first touchdown of the night, the all time rushing leader in NSA history. 38 to 12 in the third quarter. They can smell it. Chamberlain on the roll this time, fires downfield, finds Jason Smith. He's got some space. He'll take it down the sidelines. 35 yard touchdown pass makes it look a little better, but. There's your champions. NSA with their fourth state title in school history and the first in the storied 41-year coaching career of Lou Johnson. He spent 27 years at Western Branch, so congrats to him and his Mansman Suffolk Academy Saints. Keyshawn Moore with 130 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Atlantic Shores led by Ryan Chamberlain's 341 yards and three touchdowns. A fine season for them in their first loss of the year, though, 38 to 18. Look at this, Oscar Smith, one point ekes out grass field. And Holloway, only 28 yards receiving. Holloway did make his college commitment last week to Florida, so he's going to play for the Gators. Cole Gibson with two field goals. But Oscar Smith, Rich Morgan's team, staying undefeated as they move on to take on Ocean Lakes, a 36-3 winner over Cox. Kalen LeBourne with 117 yards rushing and two touchdowns. The freshman Jake Lowe also finding the end zone as it was the first game for Cox without a touchdown since 2013. Some big matchups getting set up here. Moving on, Northridge region playoffs. Westfield over South Lakes, 24-13. Tyler Scanlon with two touchdown rushing for the Bulldogs, while Eric Curlew had 116 yards receiving and a touchdown. When we come back, Andy, we have Amherst County taking on Salem, as well as Cox at practice with the Lake Tedder Titans, right here on Sports Report. Back here on Sports Report, I'm Matthew Haffitt alongside Andy Michal, and we're not done yet. Andy, we've got more playoff highlights coming your way. Going out west this time, the playoffs continue in the mountains. It is Amherst, the Lancers, taking on Salem, the Spartans. Salem trying to get back to that state championship game last year. They were beaten by Lake Taylor at Lynchburg or Liberty University, and they see right there the kickoff for Taishi Meganson getting hit right away by Nick Wade, so backed up inside their own 20. And again, that Salem defense, it is suffocating as another hit delivered by Luke Owen. They're trying to get something going here for, and here's Jordan Woodford 
up the middle. A little bit of yardage going there for Amherst. Amherst kind of trying to set up that play action pass, but they would eventually punt. And you know what that means. Someone's uh -oh. got the ball near midfield. And Alex Ramsey, a little dipsy do maneuvering here as he gets a couple yards out of what would have been a bad loss there. And now they will go to the air with Noah Beckley rolling to his left. Has an open receiver, and it'll be Vincent Pinello doing the rest. 58 yards to Pater. A good throw on the run, and that's not very good coverage. Pinello wide open, 58 yards on the touchdown. And it's 7-0 early going for Salem. Spartans in a familiar place at home at Willis Whitefield with the lead. And now trying to get after quarterback Trey Shuford for Amherst County. Throwing across his body, Ooh. not generally a recipe for success, and it is picked off by Keontae Burnett. Yeah, it, it's tough to throw across your body into the middle of the field. That's usually considered a no-no, and that's why. Here's Beckley. This is not a no-no. This is Deontay Tucker in the corner of the end zone. A 13-yard touchdown. 14-0. Spartans taking the lead. The Salem fans say, yes, yes. We want to go to Tucker as much as possible, especially when they crowd the box to try to contain Claiborne and Ramsey. And now the little squib kick will be corralled here by Salem here and they will set them up with pretty good field position. You're not going to catch a team like Salem off guard too often. Yeah, an offense like this, you don't want to give them half a field. Beckley down, down to Tucker. 56-yard bomb. It doesn't matter where they stood on the field. That play, look at that play. Tucker, second touchdown catch, 21 to nothing. Some wondered about with Isaiah Parker graduating, who would be that big play weapon in the passing game. Tucker has been it, and Dante Claiborne, one of the returning Backs for them that can get it done and break away for yeah. a long run. 61 yards. He will scamper and stay in bounds. Just down the sidelines. You know Claiborne's going to have highlights, so you know who else is going to have highlights. 28 to nothing now. Claiborne gets a carry. Now he's going to get a block from Ramsey, and he's going to get another carry. And he takes off down the sidelines again. Not a touchdown that time, but a pretty good chunk, 22 yards or so. Yeah, good chemistry, sort of like that old Buccaneers back for a work done on Mike Allstott. And there's the guy playing the Allstott role. It's Alex Ramsey up the middle for the touchdown. And Salem continuing to pour it on with the ground attack. See, that's what I was going for. I was going for the Ramsey touchdown. I got ahead, but you see where we're going with this. Here is a kickoff. Now watch this. A little trickeration here for Amherst. We're going to run up the middle. No, it's going to be reversed. Salem says, nah, it's all right. You can reverse it all day. We're going to be here waiting for you. Doesn't get very far, about a 25 yard line or so. So they're trying some things. Give them credit, Amherst is doing something. Yeah, you can't fault Coach Cecil Phillips too much for trying some razzle dazzle. Just unfortunately, not enough firepower to win this game. As you see, Jerry Page will run it there. And not quitting, though, this Lancers team with a lot of pride in their program. They've had success before in the playoffs. And right here on the run, it'll be Malik Woodfolk, the older brother of Jordan. And that'll set up Jordan with the run. Woodfolk in the spin move on the goal line, and he dives in. Good pride score there, but not quite enough to get it done. Salem, the powerhouse, 35-7 is your final. Two of those three touchdown passes for Beckley going to Deontay Tucker. Beckley finished with 198 yards passing as Salem marches on to the next round. In the 3A West region, that is Stanton River, 85-79. That is not a mess up. That is a, not a basketball score. Trust us, we double check. That is a football score. And the highest scoring game in VHSL playoff history as TJ Tester and Grayson Overstreet combined for over 500 yards rushing and eight touchdowns. You feel bad for quarterback Sam Hearn as he counts for nine touchdowns and 569 yards, but loses as the Golden Eagles and Warriors together. <laughs> 1,357 yards of offense. Yikes. What a game. Did anybody make a tackle in that game? Don't think so. Magna Vista, 36-13 over Brookville in the 3A West. The defending state champs, Magna Vista, will see Stanton River in the next round. Stanton River was 2-8 a year ago. Magna Vista trying to repeat, and Sholan McGuire and Jaquez Hairston giving them a chance as they combine for five touchdowns. 2A West, it is Glenvar, 19-7 over Giles. Darrell Manns with 186 yards rushing and two touchdowns for Glenvar, who has now beaten Giles three straight times. Giles led by Brian Manns, 110 yards rushing in defeat. All right, we got more action coming up. Big matchup between Lake Taylor. Their playoff run continues. But first, let's go and see how Lake Taylor gets ready for big matchups. And you got a chance to go there. So let's just go along, go see what's going on. We're here in Norfolk at Lake Taylor High School. Home of the Titans, the defending Group 4A state champions in Virginia. Coach Hank Sawyer's team is undefeated yet again as they chase their third state title in four years. They're getting everybody's best shot, but they don't mind it. They relish the opportunities and challenges that are in front of them. One, two, three, two, clap. Hooray! Oh! Oh! 
you know, it's not I was going to be on my program on defense first and the run game, and we've been successful and been able to do that. Everybody competitive. Everybody going to play. No, no excuses. Ain't no excuses at all. They just come to play every game. They want it war, so we going to get them war. That's what they want it. Hard work and practice and dedication. That's the main focus. We always go hard and practice every day. Go! Oh! I mean, we gotta come out every day and inflict pain. You kill us, ant with a sledgehammer. You got, you gotta um come out here and execute. We treat practice like it's the game. We catch interception, we score. We get a sack, try to get the fumble, strip it, score. We always try to score on defense. We have more depth than we had last year. We can transition a lot of people. A lot of people can come in and out in different positions, and we can move the defense around a lot. We have 12 to 15 kids on this team that can play a lot of positions real well. Intimidation is what we aim for when we come out on the field every day. So the kids, you know, between their IQ and uh, this stubbornness don't want to be the weak spot. I stepped it up. I want them to see a relentless late tell defense and offense and special teams. Relentless, never giving up, never taking plays off. We get into your heart and we scare you and we come out and put things. If you test them, they're going to make you pay. It's a, it's a battle, because on our defense, it allows us to, to organize chaos, so it is a battle every day. I think I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got the best secondary in the state. We come out each and every game extremely, extremely hard. We take nobody like what we're always prepared for. We don't try to wear nobody out. Yeah. They, they're on each other and they all have you know interceptions and they you know they make each other work we're going to strive for you know to get 100 points we're not going to settle for nothing less but a one and when you prepare for that and when you fight through that that shows that you're a stronger team so sorry he's, he's more like a father figure we can tell him anything we really have that type of relationship with him. so we, we, we just we're blessed defensively to have the type of guys we have I want people to see that we can do it. The last couple of weeks, I've been really stopping us offensively and defensively and special teams to see if I was playing or just what would I attack, you know, what would I focus on, and that's helped us a lot being able to do that. You can follow the Titans and their journey to a state title all postseason long on Sports Report. For Cox at Practice, I'm Matthew Hatfield. <laughs>with Andy Michelle, I am Matthew Hatfield, and Andy, we now turn our attention to Norfolk. It's the Lake Taylor Titans, the defending state champions, playing host to the Kings Fork Bulldogs. Last year, Kings Fork got beaten pretty soundly, 35-6 to by Lake Taylor. Could it be a repeat performance? Well, we'll see. Lake Taylor in the dark jerseys, the red and black. Kings Fork in the light, the gold colored jerseys. And Ryan Cluck getting it going early. Terry Tubbs jump ball, and he comes down with a 20-yard touchdown. Uh-oh. Lake Taylor down, seven to nothing. Just like that, they've eclipsed last year's total in the playoffs against Lake Taylor. The defending state champs trying to run their winning streak to 27 games in the arm of Tyree Cuey, trying to help them get there. He finds the touchdown with Richard Russell, 47 yards to the house, and the Titans on the board deadlocked at seven late in the first. All right, you're noticing a pattern here. Lots of yardage. Well, it's going to continue. Here's Cluck. Uh-oh, somebody forgot to cover John Spearman. And there he goes, 92 yards. He's not really that fast, but it's 92 yards, and it's a 13-7 lead. Missed the extra point. 
Missed the extra point. That could come back to haunt the Bulldogs. But however, now in this series, Ooh. as Ryan Clutt takes a big hit, finds Deshaun Wellington, and a good thing he did because that guy's pretty fast too. He runs it in 42 yards for a touchdown. The Towson commit, an all-time leading rusher in Kings Fork history. It's 20 to 7. Blake Taylor's at home going, what's going on? Let's try to get something going. They couldn't, so they get a punt, and then it's blocked by Spearman. Spearman runs it down and eventually picks it up, rolls over it into the end zone. Another touchdown, 26 to 7. Largest deficit Lake Taylor has faced all year, 19 points, and their win streak in serious jeopardy. Kevon Bruton, the Temple commit with a stiff arm and a touchdown reception, 32 yards from Huey, and the Titans back on the board. Can the defense respond, though? There, they're getting there, all right. Maybe we've got something jump-started here for the Titans. Huey back on his own territory this time, fires out wide. That's a little pass caught by Wayne Davis, and Wayne Davis takes off. Goodbye. 80 yards for the touchdown, 21-26 now. You see how fast he ran? That's why he's going to Ohio State. <laughs> And Weddington, he's also another guy that's a playmaker. He finds the end zone again for the second time. 32-21, early third quarter. Still a lot of football to be played. Huey again, little pump fake, goes downtown. Way Davis is there. 60 yards, is he going to get in? Is he fighting these dragon defenders to the end zone? He scores 60 yards, 32-29. Not an easy guy to tackle as the Kingsport secondary unfortunately found out in this one. Ryan Cluck with a stiff arm. He doesn't want to be tackled or denied of Whoa. a chance to move on. Look at him rumbling. 73-yard touchdown run, his longest of the season, 39-29. Kings Fork extending their lead. His yards and points all over the field. Here's Huey again. Drops back. Huey fires over the middle, tipped and caught by Bruton. He is gone. 59-yard touchdown. This game is crazy. Is this Stanton River Western Albemarle or Lake yeah, Taylor, Taylor Kings Fork? No, it's Lake Taylor Kings Fork, 39-37. Titans now the chance to take the lead. It's Wayne Davis going to take this short pass, and he's going to race the other More. way for a touchdown. Look at that run again. 96 yards to the house, and the Titans have erased the 19-point deficit. Now in the lead. 39-45. Last shot for Kings Fork. Cluck back to throw. Downfield, and it's not quite enough. Davis picks it off, and why not? He can score touchdowns on offense, he scored touchdowns on defense. 38-yard touchdown return off the INT. Final score, 52 to 39. Davis's fifth pick six of the year, his 17th career interception. He's had the third most receiving yards in a playoff game in VHSL history. Oh, by the way, Huey's 428 yards passing. Uh, also sixth most in VHSL history, tying a record with six touchdown passes. The Titans move on. Points all over the place. Lafayette, 41 to 13 over Heritage in the 4A East. Andy Lynn's Rams staying undefeated as Hezekiah Grimsley and Caleb Cragenbrink combined for three touchdowns. The Hurricanes led by Treshawn Shackleford's two touchdowns on the ground. Moving on, Indian River at home against Kinkatan. The cheerleaders there, but they want to hit somebody. Cheerleaders want to go on the field. Givers Wilson is on the field. Tyreek finds his man, that is Devon Hunter, and Devon Hunter finds a good 35-yard gain into Kinkatan territory. Hunter set up the last two games, including their first-round playoff win over Bethel with an injury. He's now healthy, and Tyler Christ, he's been healthy and effective all year long for Kinkatan, both offensively and defensively, sacking Givers Wilson there. This is going to be a defensive struggle. We saw points all over the place. This one the other way. Here is Givers Wilson, and that is not his teammate. That is Ken Davis picking him off. Inside the Braves territory, he fumbles, but he jumps right back on it, so they keep possession. How good have the Warriors been this postseason, getting blocked field goals and takeaways against Salem to spring the upset, trying to do the same thing against Indian River as the defense and special teams coming up clutch. Now Desmond Savage, their quarterback, finding Keith Grandy, and you know the Grandy man can when he's near the end zone. Touchdown, the Warriors in the lead, the number seven seed, trying to spring the upset again. However, the extra point there would be up and well, true, seven to nothing. So. You know, Indian River's going to need special teams to give them a spark, Andy. Well, yeah, let's try it again. Givers Wilson, this time deep in their territory, into the end zone, tipped in, no incomplete, almost picked off by Grandy. Couldn't quite bring it down, though. Six seconds left in the half. Here's a field goal attempt. 37 yards. Nope, that's blocked. 7 0. The score stands into the half. Caleb Tucker getting a hand on it. He had a hand on the block field goal against Salem a week ago. And there's oh. that Indian River defense. It is aggressive. Tyon Smith almost had him, but it'll be Daquan Riddick with the sack. And the Braves come back and win it 18-7 behind Smith's two touchdown runs and 116 yards on the ground. Player of the week, Wayne Davis. We just saw him saw fast he runs. Well, that's some fast forward. But 293 yards and three touchdowns plus a 38-yard interception return. Why not? Give him the player of the week. Yeah, that. 
seven game winning streak for the Lake Tenor. We've got some exciting matchups coming up. Ocean Lakes, Oscar Smith. You can't forget about a course also in 5A Indian River, Hampton. And we'll have all those highlights when you come back next week. Andy Michelle, I'm Matt Hatfield. We'll see you next time right here on the Cox Sports Report.